place at the right time and, and a lot of luck but, but being capable and having the talent to go through those doors, you know, being prepared to. So I was in a bunch of bands in LA and I'm not gonna tell you because a lot of them are <laughs> <laughs> and we used to play at the Coconut Teaser and, and you guys from LA, like most of you are from LA, right? Coconut teaser, that's not even there. We used to play at the what's that club out in the valley? Checker Club or something. I was in this band, I'll tell you, it's one of the band called Four or Five Dopes. Who <laughs> <laughs> Walt played bass and rhymed, and he was this real tall, lanky looking white guy. And it was great, it was fun, but it all led me to this, you know, and, and uh, it was cool. But, but yeah, that's what gave me the idea of being in that DJ club. I was like, man, I'm trying to do this with a live band, but that's what we really cool. And, you know, years, years later, here I you am. Know, I'm lucky and fortunate to be here. I love the guy. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what else? Rapes. Yeah, yeah. I grew up in Pennsylvania, really? the country roads, and you know, it was just like crazy. And uh, uh, he would play music, he would music. He would, my first concert he took me to was Pink Floyd. You know? So I was like, I was like, you know, I was all into that. So that was cool. What inspired me to be a DJ was, I guess I was kind of rebellious when I was young. Like, I didn't really feel like I fit in. You know, especially even when I hung out with black kids, they, they didn't think I was black because I was mixed. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like I didn't feel it anywhere. So I was rebellious about it. So I got into hip hop, especially Public Enemy. That was my shit. <laughs> <laughs> so then I got into deep. I was, you know, all these, I heard all these weird sounds. And some samples were scratching. And then I saw Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Yeah. Uh, and I saw Jazzy Jeff and I was like, what is that guy doing? You know, it's the first time I actually saw what was going on. I was I, instantly, I was like, that's what I'm doing. So I got a pair of turntables. I had to I had to work in McDonald's to get my first turntable. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. But as soon as I had the money to get it, <laughs> and then uh, and then I just went from there. I didn't have anybody to teach me or nothing. I just was I just tried to figure it out. You know? And back then, a lot of DJs would cover up their record labels, so nobody knew what they were doing. You know, they just like you can't know what record I'm playing. You can't know what scratching I'm doing. You know, you know nothing. It was real secret. And now. You have DJs like DJ Kubert, who in my mind is probably Sick. the best DJ on the planet. You know, like he's just, he's God as far as a DJ. He basically said, okay, we're doing all this crazy stuff. We're going to show you how to do it. And he just opened up the floodgates in the Mixmaster mic and all this scratch people. And they just started putting DVDs out saying, okay, if you want to be a DJ, here's scratching 101. Here's how to scratch. You know, here's how to do this. And here's your scratch records. So that kind of changed the whole scene of DJing. That's kind of my attitude, you know. I'll show anybody how to scratch, I'll show them what to use, I'll show them what to do, because you can only take that and make it better. And then if I have a little piece to do with that, then, you know, I did my job. You know? That's awesome. Right? Yeah. That's so good.
chicks, you know, and just whatever, you know, buddies can tell me about the boys and stuff, and I would just get weird sounds, you know, kind of, kind of just mask and they fit, you know. So I guess like an age me, kind of gone away because I mean, we can play these, and I can play both, and I kind of embrace it. Yeah. And everybody's like, why don't you scratch him more, why don't you scratch him more? Yeah, it's the largest hard thing, right? Here. Yeah. This guitar? Yeah. You can take it out of there. Tell it up, yeah. We're just holding it up, demonstrate, showing it. Mike was not here. Mike was here. That's what Mike did last night. That's all. Strings. Uh, Susan Kanayama. Strings. And then I have to tell him. Mike was. That was when we were wanting to do all this. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Seals. Mm -hmm. It's really 
say what up, kill when I'm in your town And I'll light it up and we can burn one down Just say what up, kill when I'm in your town And I'll light it up and we can burn one down Just say what up Yeah. 